All right, it's time for another update on the wildfires going on in the West. I'm going to mostly focus on the Dixie Fire and the Tamarack Fire, but then towards the end of the video, we'll jump around to all the other big fires that have happened this season, including that River Fire, Tenant Fire, Lava Fire, uh, Salt Fire, and Bootleg Fire, just to check in on those to see how those are doing. But looking at the imagery right now, a few things I noticed. One, you can still see some of that monsoonal moisture coming through. Certainly less than we've seen in the past. We've switched to a slightly drier pattern right now, but as we were talking about in yesterday's weather forecast, patchy moisture moving through over the next couple of days, and then towards the start of the, this next weekend, we're going to see a large amount of moisture move back in, and that's why we'll certainly have to look at those thunderstorm possibilities, because that's really the one question mark remaining in the forecast about if a uh, Future thunderstorm possibility could bring some new lightning fire starts or some erratic gusty winds and kick up some of the smoldering areas of our fire. Or if it'll be another system like we've seen with the thunderstorms over the last few days where it actually dropped a decent amount of rainfall over our fires, really helped firefighters out. We had some great cloud cover, keeping the temperatures cooler, and firefighters just made some great progress. So. That is the big question mark moving forward, so we certainly will di be diving into the fire weather forecast to see how that might be impacting our wildfires, but the overall theme of this video is that most of our fires are looking great right now. So this is mostly going to be good news coming out in this video. You might be wondering how I can say that when you do see this large smoke plume coming off of the Dixie fire right here, and certainly more smoke than we were seeing yesterday. Part of the reason for the increased smoke, one, we had very weak winds last night, so a lot of that smoke was able to settle down, and two, we did have warmer, drier conditions throughout the day today than in previous days, so we were expecting to see some of this increased fire activity. Now, what makes me feel a little bit better about this imagery right here, the fact that it is increased from yesterday, is one, if we look at where those hot spots are actually popping up, you do see those little red dots there where there is some active fire going on, but it compared to a week ago, that looks much, much better. There were times on the Dixie fire here where we would have six separate plumes that were just glowing bright red, so certainly nowhere close to where we were about a week ago, both in how much smoke is being produced and the heat that we're seeing coming off of the fire. Now, you might be able to see one large smoke plume if you are in this area, so I do have to update you on that. You can see this looks like it's extreme fire behavior. We have, once it zooms out and you can see the top of the cloud, you can see we do have some pyrocumulus development. That is certainly indicative of some extreme fire behavior, but the good news with that one is it's actually inside of the containment lines. It's not posing any new threats to any new structures. This is actually the same camera that we were looking at the other day, and while we were looking at it, we first saw the plume, it actually looked a lot like this, and I was concerned that the fire activity was picking up and couldn't find any updated information on what that fire activity was, so I was saying, okay, conditions have been looking good over the last couple days, but it looks like we're picking up now, so we might have to worry a little bit, but what ended up happening with that smoke plume was that was actually a firing operation to clear out some of the fuels and and I was very surprised when I heard that because it certainly looked a lot larger than any firing operation I'd seen but it was under control it wasn't posing new, any new threats and that's pretty much how this current fire activity is as well it certainly looks like it's scary but it is within the control lines as of right now and Last I checked, again, I good place to get information. One, all the links I put in the description, but also Twitter if you know who to follow. There's lots of great CAL FIRE resources and a number of other good wildfire resources. They were saying that this currently poses no threat. So that is some good news there. And it actually looks like in the last hour to maybe the last half hour, we've certainly seen that behavior reduce so that will likely continue to calm down throughout the overnight hours. Now, if we look at actually, if we actually look at the fire perimeter map, this is where more of the good news comes in compared to previous forecast videos where we'd look at this map and you would see 
large amounts of hot spots outside of the previous day's perimeter. That means that fire is actively growing. There were some days where you'd see hot spots stretching far outside of the perimeter and those ones that are glowing bright yellow and you can't really even see an example of those on this map because the fire activity has diminished quite a lot over the last few days. So this turn in events really started to maybe three days ago when we had that thick smoke layer over the Dixie Fire. We went from about 93 degrees one day to only 82 degrees the next day because that smoke just wasn't letting any of that new heat in. And then that also led to some calmer winds. Then with that next wave of thunderstorms that came through the Dixie Fire, again, that's always the big question mark because you don't know if it's going to lead to some gusty erratic winds like we saw with the first round that really made this northeastern edge take off or if you get some great rainfall and some increased humidity, which was what happened with the second round of thunderstorms. So lots of factors came together over the last few days to really reduce the fire activity on the Dixie Fire. You can just see that based on how, how much fewer hot spots that you see on this map. And then the other thing that's really been helping us out with the Dixie Fire is the large amount of resources we have on this one, over 5,000 personnel. I'll do the update on all the resources in a second here, but again, lots of things working in our favor. And I believe where that one smoke plume, the one that we're looking at on this cam, I do believe that's on this northwestern section of the fire right here, but it's actually, believe it or not, this is where you can actually start to fight fire with fire. They have a number of containment lines around this area right here, and they're actually waiting, or not waiting, but yeah, actually waiting for favorable conditions to allow the fire to continue to burn out some of those fuels. So then it just moves up to their containment lines, and then they can just basically attack it directly, then just patrol it and mop it up because there just will be reduced fuels in that area. So. A lot of the hot, spot, the hot spots that we're seeing right now are actually helping us. It's either firefighters allowing the fire to continue to burn until it pushes up to the containment lines, or in a lot of these cases, it's actually firefighters purposely doing firing operations and fighting fire with fire. We've seen that a lot on this northern side. You can see that line up there, that's all firing operation, and you can see how they do this. They start the firing operation a ways away from the fire, clear out a lot of the fuels, and then just wait for the fire to connect to it, and then by the time the fire moves in there, there's no more fuels to burn, and the fire basically stops in its tracks. That's one of the great features that's protecting a lot of the structures around Lake Almanor. We've also seen some firing operations on this southern edge, and lots of new dozer lines and containment lines to protect the town of Quincy. We've also seen that around Bucks Lake as well, so Overall, on this fire, we've had over 5,000 personnel, we've had some much more favorable weather conditions helping us, and we've had some very successful firing operations all working in our favor, and as of right now, this fire is honestly looking great, especially when you compare it to about a week ago. And Again, sometimes I get some negative feedback when I'm too positive about a fire because, again, there are... There's lots of bad things to think about. For example, this has burned over 200,000 acres. We've had structures destroyed, but when it comes to the current conditions and when you compare them to how bad this fire was looking in the past, you remember when that northeastern section was just taking off, it was jumping containment lines. It was basically out of control. Compared to that, we are looking great right now. So I would say, it is okay to be optimistic when the conditions do look like they are, do look like they're getting better. So when it comes to this, this actually shows the current, the most recent hotspots a little bit better. You can see where those bright red spots are, but again, most of those are actually firing operations, especially those ones up on the north here and around this northeastern edge as well. Know that that's some of the firing operations. And then this northwestern section, again, that's that where we saw that large smoke plume and where it looks like it is the most active fire, but they have containment lines in place around that area, and they're actually just waiting for the fire to burn out some of those fuels. Now, again, when it comes to the structures, you can see there are a decent amount of structures around that northwestern section, 
But again, they have those lines in place to protect those structures and they do have large amount of crews in that area. You can see again, large amount of structures in the Lake Almanor area. I would say, again, when it comes to evacuation warnings, always check the links in the description. There are still a large amount of evacuation warnings in place. That's a good thing to keep in mind when I'm talking about the good news with this fire. But as of right now, those structures around Lake Almanor are looking, are looking like they're in a much, much safer position than they were a week ago. A week ago, this northern edge of the fire was growing more than 10,000 acres a day. Now we have that great firing operation that has cleared out a lot of those fuels and is protecting those structures up in that location. You can see the same thing is going on on this northeastern edge as well. Those firing operations going on over the last 24 hours and number of dozer lines and hand crew lines being put in place as well to protect that large amount of structures there in Quincy. And again, lots of success on the Bucks Lake area as well. That's an area that they've actually felt confident about for over a week now. So overall, lots of good news coming from the Dixie Fire. I think that basically sums it up right there. Lots of successful work being done over the last few days. But again, when it comes to the numbers, this is a good thing to think about when we are currently optimistic on this fire is that it has already done a lot of damage. You can see it's up to 217,000 acres and we are at 23% containment. But if we scroll down and look at the structures, again, this is a number you never want to report, but we have seen 54 structures destroyed. So again, even though we're optimistic right now, you do have to remember what has happened throughout the lifetime of this fire. And it's at least good to see that we are trending in the right direction. Now, another way to put those numbers into perspective is you can go to the top 20 largest California wildfires and you can see that Dixie Fire is currently 14 on the list. We'll see if we take over that number 13 position. A few days ago, it would have been a guarantee because we were growing 10,000 acres a day, but now it'll be interesting to see if we even get another 2,500 acres burned on this one. Now you can also see a couple other things I notice is one, the fact that this fire did is burning in July. That's a pretty important thing to think about because a lot of the worst fires we see are actually in the month of August and getting into September and especially when those Diablo winds start to pick up. So that makes me think about how critically dry the fuels are in this area and we do have to remain on extra guard throughout the season because those fuels are critically dry and it is a little bit alarming or I'd say actually a lot of bit alarming to be seeing the 14th largest wildfire in California recorded history as early as July so it does give a little precursor towards what the rest of the season may look like and that I think I'm not say, trying to say that to scare anybody but just to say that it's always great to have a plan in place it's great to do all the fire preparation around your properties and stay updated with all the most recent information when it comes to wildfires like this. Again, great. I believe I have the link in the description below for readyforwildfire.org and uh, that's a great resource to go to. I actually just used that, that the other day to get some great advice for clearing the fuels around where I live. Now, the other thing I notice on this list is, again, we do have that 54 structures destroyed, but that's where you can start to Again, we never want to see that. My thoughts and prayers go out to everybody who has been affected by these wildfires. But you can see that compared to like the top five to top eight wildfires in the history of California, a lot of those burned more than 200, some of these at more than 2,000. So again, when it comes to structures destroyed, you never want to see it, but you also have to put it into perspective to some of the massive wildfires we have we've had in the past and the point I'm trying to make here is that's just an, a testament to the amazing work that the firefighters have done on this one again over 5,000 people on this fire so if we actually want to look at the resources that were that we still have on this fire we have 34 helicopters 420 engines 192 dozers 90 water tenders 5,306 personnel and 90 crews. In a lot of cases, they're working around the clock. And again, the, the point I was trying, I'm trying to make is that 
Compared to a week ago when this fire was just growing rapidly, it was jumping containment lines and it looked like we were moving in a very bad direction, we had a favorable shift in the weather conditions and we've had over 5,000 personnel, some cases working around the, around the clock, who have really managed this fire extremely well. And it looks like that should continue to be the case moving forward. Now when it comes to what it's going to look like moving forward, we have had a shift in the weather pattern. Again, those really favorable con conditions were when we were a bit cooler, we had reduced winds, we had that monsoonal moisture with a lot of that cloud cover and a lot of moisture moving into the area. You can see we've started to shift to a different pattern. Definitely, definitely on the warmer side, back into the low to mid 90s, both tomorrow and throughout the day on Friday. Not seeing as extreme of winds as we we're seeing at the beginning of this fire where we we're getting 30 mile per hour wind gusts in every single afternoon. We do still get some of those wind gusts, but not anything too critical there. And then when it comes to the humidity, the main thing I notice here is that it does stay dry 24 hours a day. Typically, when it comes to a relative humidity plot, you want to see it jump up to 60 to 70% at night. That really calms the fire down. And then it usually drops down to the 20s to low teens throughout the day. But you can see that over the next two days, both tonight, throughout tomorrow afternoon, then Friday night, then Friday afternoon, expected to be, or Friday morning into Friday afternoon, we're expected to see a lot drier pattern that, than we have had recently. Now, that does remind me that last night we actually had so much moisture in the area and even a little rain from our thunderstorms that they actually couldn't even do a firing operation on the western side because the fuels just had so much moisture that it basically wasn't favorable enough conditions to burn. So that tells you something about the favorable conditions that we have had recently. Now, again, we are seeing a shift in pattern. So with all the good news we have had, we do have to stay updated because we are seeing a change in the pattern. And just based on that live camera we were looking at, certainly more potential for activity than we were seeing in previous days. And then right now, the National Weather Service doesn't have any thunderstorm possibility for the Dixie Fire area, but if we if we look at the overall pattern, I believe that possibility is still there. Again, it's all caused by that high pressure system over Wyoming and Utah that has really just been churning right here for over a week now, and that has clockwise circulation, so it takes some of this moisture from Arizona, pushes it into California. Again, it's diminished right now, because you can see it's moved farther almost over to Oklahoma to Nebraska area. So less moisture flowing in right now, but then as we get towards the weekend, we're gonna start to see that new system shift a little bit farther back to the west, and you'll be able to see this better on the water vapor imagery. So right now you can see we have mostly dry air over us, but then again, there's that patchy moisture moving through every once in a while it almost looks like a tiger it's just striped between drier and moisture and then as we get later into friday saturday and sunday it looks like that monsoonal moisture activity is going to pick up again so that's where we'll have to keep our eye on any thunderstorm possibility coming in and then it looks like as we go way off in the forecast into the middle of next week that's where we shift back to the just the normal california pattern where it's onshore flow with very dry air over the area. So this basically sums up the fire weather concerns. Again, it's drier and warmer than in previous days. And then not so much today, but getting into Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we have that increased thunderstorm potential. And again, that's always the big thing I think about when trying to up, trying to forecast these fires because it really is a wild card. It can either, like the first round of thunderstorms that came through, brought erratic gusty winds and basically led to explosive fire growth. The second round of thunderstorms that came through led to increased rainfall, increased cloud cover, reduced temperatures, some mist and drizzle, some increased relative humidity, lots of good things. We saw much reduced fire behavior. So with the third round of thunderstorms coming through, we really don't know what's going to happen yet, so we'll just have to keep an eye on this one. But overall, things are looking great for the Dixie Fire. Now, with that being said, there are still a large amount of evacuation orders in place, so 
Click the link in the description for all the most recent information on that, just because the overall fire behavior and the patterns are looking better and the trends are looking better, especially when compared to a week ago. There are still a large number of evacuation orders in place, so you have to stay updated with your local resources, and I put a lot of those links in the description below. So let's now transition to the Tamarack fire, and once again, we can't really see it because of those thunderstorms over the area, and thunderstorms over the last few days have actually been favorable for the Tamarack fire. We've seen a decent amount of rainfall, which has been helping firefighters. We've had increased cloud cover, keeping temperatures a bit cooler, increased moisture as well, and overall just favorable conditions over the last few days for the Tamarack fire. It actually looked like a beautiful day this morning. Little bit of smoke and haze that was settling down there, but usually when you see that smoke settling um, in the early morning hours, sometimes you can take that as good news because it means you had light winds, which leads to less new fire growth, even if you do have increased smoke coming down to the surface. And then you can see a couple little areas of some light smoke coming up throughout the last couple of hours, but again, looking pretty great comparatively. We looked at this cam about a week ago and there was a massive pyrocumulus cloud coming up right here. The fire was actually coming close to the camera. Looks like looked like it was about to burn over where the camera was and you can see much, much calmer conditions now. And actually in a couple of those frames, it actually looked like it was very nice conditions out there. So zooming into this fire, this basically sums up what's going with the Tamarack as well. Very few hot spots remaining. You can see maybe a couple in here, but I believe those are firing operations. We have some helicopters and some hotshot crews on the southern edge right here. That's one of the last few spots remaining uncontained on this fire. And then a couple hot spots down on the southern edge as well, but that whole southern edge throughout the entire lifetime of this fire has just been moving very slowly. There, for a large period of time, they didn't have any resources down here, and the fire was barely even moving, and even went out in a couple of cases without any resources, so not too concerned about that southern edge, or honestly any edge of this fire at this point. Now, if you need some reassurance for my optimism on this one and my confidence, one, you can just look at how few hotspots remain on this, especially compared to a week ago where that entire northeastern section was growing about 20,000 acres a day, it was jumping Highway 395, threatening a large amount of structures. Now when we look at the interactive map, I believe I have it up right here, you just got a little sneak peek at the acreage. Now when we look at the interactive map, that entire northern section of the fire is contained at this point, the eastern section is contained, the southern areas have seen very slow growth over the last four days, or actually throughout the entire lifetime of this fire, and we're most likely going to have some increased containment down on that side as well. But even if we didn't have increased containment down there, very few hotspots remaining, and the ones that are aren't burning all that extreme, and they're not moving very fast. You can also see the evacuation orders in a lot of our areas with the with the most structures. If we turn on structures, you can see where they are. Again, there were some parts of this fire that were alarming, especially when it was getting up close to these structures on this northern finger here, and then especially when it jumped Highway 395 with that spot fire, and you can see how it surrounded a lot of these structures and was getting closer and closer to this large area of structures. Amazing work done, our, done by our firefighters on this one to protect a lot of those resources in that area. And you can see that both those areas where we have the largest amount of structures are completely contained right now. And when it comes to Markleyville, which is in the middle here, where you see those structures right there, you notice no hot spots remaining in the middle of this fire. So overall looking great for the Tamarack fire. We do have that one evacuation warning in place right there, but we should see continued progress over the next few days and hopefully that one will get lifted soon. Again, you can access that current information by clicking the link in the description. So when it comes to the acreage burned, barely any increase in acreage burned from yesterday. Again, I made kind of a risky prediction a number of days ago that we were going to remain under 70,000 acres with the Tamarack fire, and I think I'm actually going to stand by that because the fire, I, I usually don't say things like this because it's kind of risky, but 
I the fire basically looks like it is under control at this point we still have a large amount of resources on this fire doing great work the highest priority areas are completely contained and I personally don't think that we're going to see more than 1500 more acres burn on this one unless it's purposeful firing operations to clear out some of the remaining fuels you can see containment has jumped up to 59 percent so that's great to see there and then like i said large amount of personnel still on this fire even though we have much much reduced fire behavior we still have a thousand personnel in some cases working around the clock just making sure that nothing new jumps up or gets out of controls because we have seen that happen with some fires in the past where it looks like it's wrapped up and then you get some crazy gusty winds come through in some afternoon hour and again that's always why I'm mostly concerned about thunder the thunderstorm threat and then the fire jumps back up so we do still have over a thousand personnel on this one just working around the clock to make sure that that doesn't happen. Now when we look at the forecast for Thursday you can see mostly cloudy with numerous thunderstorms Heavy rainfall is possible. That's a factor on this fire that has been helping us throughout the last few days. We've actually gotten some decent rain on this one. It's help. It doesn't usually just put the fire out, but it has certainly helped things. And minimum RH 30 to 45%. So that's great to see there as well. There were some periods of this fire where we had RH in the single digits to low teens. So looking at the fire weather forecast over the next couple days, you can see temperatures certainly not as extreme as we've seen it still on the warm side low 80s but not in the mid 90s so that's some good news there we're also not seeing those 20 to 30 mile per hour wind gusts picking up in the afternoons like we were seeing when the northeastern section of this fire was taking off and as we just saw increased humidity compared to when we were in the single digits to low teens although slightly drier throughout the day tomorrow than we were in previous days now the so overall, when it comes to temperature, winds, humidity, I'd say we're looking pretty good on the Tamarack fire. The big question mark, though, again, is the thunderstorm possibility. You can see both right now throughout from 11 a.m. to about 10 p.m. tomorrow and then picking up again 11 a.m. on Friday till later Friday night. You can see we have that 30 to 50 percent chance of thunderstorm. So again, I've said this over and over again, but. This can either be a good thing, like the most recent thunderstorms that dropped some great rainfall and helped put the fire out and increase containment, or it can be a bad thing, like the first round of thunderstorms, where that entire northeastern finger had erratic gusty winds and it took off into Nevada. So while the fire does look great right now, I would say we'll have to just, I will continue to monitor it because you never really know what's going to happen when those thunderstorms are coming into an area. But right now, I would. I would say I'm fairly confident when it comes to the Tamarack fire. So again, when it comes to those thunderstorms, what's driving it is that high pressure system with the clockwise flow, taking that moisture from Arizona, pushing it into California. If we actually want to see what that looks like, you can see over the next couple days, it's not as constant, especially on Thursday. We have a couple stripes of moisture coming through, but it's not the entire state of California covered in a large amount. And then as we get into the weekend, or Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it looks like we're going to have increased probability for those thunderstorms as we get more and more moisture pushing through, and especially over the Sierra Nevada mountain range. So, again, that is the big question mark in the forecast, but overall, Tamarack fire looking good. That's the thunderstorm probability throughout the day tomorrow, and then throughout the day Friday, it looks like very similar conditions to that. Saturday, I imagine they're going to expand that a little bit as it looks like we'll have more moisture moving in on Saturday. So when it comes to the Dixie Fire, the Tamarack Fire, and even the Bootleg Fire up here in Oregon as well, looking much better, although with the Dixie Fire, you do see some increased smoke, at least compared to yesterday. Part of the reason for that was we had reduced winds overnight that allowed the smoke that was produced to settle down to the surface, and then also... With the warmer, drier conditions throughout the day today, we are seeing more smoke, more smoke being produced on that northwestern edge of the fire. But again, that's inside of containment lines, so nothing, no new threats being posed there. So when it comes to that smoke, 
you can see exactly what's going on right now. Again, they have that in the smoke forecast that that northwestern section is kicking up more smoke. And then as we get into the overnight hours, winds die down again. And some of that smoke is able to find its way into the northern Sacramento Valley. And it looks like stretching down to the Tahoe area as well, but certainly not as bad as previous days where we're in that heavy smoke category, just settling over the area for hours at a time. So again, when it comes to the smoke forecast, probably not a big surprise here, just comparing that satellite imagery we see right now compared to what it looked like yesterday. There is more smoke over the fire right now, so we do have that unhealthy air quality returning, stretching into the Sacramento Valley as well, and then directly over the Dixie Fire, we do have that very unhealthy air, but we should see some of that start to move out over the next couple hours as less smoke is being produced, but then again, some of that will settle down to the surface as the wind co winds come down overnight, so by the time you're waking up tomorrow, we will likely have some moderate to unhealthy air stretching over the Dixie Fire and into the Sacramento Valley as well. Now, I guess the last thing I'll say about air quality is that's much better. Well, it's certainly not ideal. There's still some smoke being produced by the fires. Certainly an improvement compared to previous forecasts where we had very unhealthy to hazardous air over large portions of California. So when it comes to just the summary for our western wildfires, again, Dixie Fire looking great right now. We had favorable conditions over the last few days. We've had a lot of successful firing operations, like that one protecting all the structures around Lake Almanor, really creating just a protective barrier on that northern section of the fire, clearing out a lot of the fuels there. We've seen similar operations around this northeastern section of the fire as well. Number of lines being put in place to protect the areas around Quincy. Great confidence around the Bucks Lake area as well. No hotspots remaining on that southern finger, which again, that was the main priority at the very, very beginning of this fire. If we go back to, I believe my first update on this one was like 12 days ago, and that was the top priority because we didn't want those down canyon winds during the nighttime hours to push this into places like Concow and Paradise, but no threat down on that southern edge anymore. It hasn't really been a threat there for over a week now. And then we do still have that fire activity on the northwestern edge of this fire, as we're seeing with the live camera here with that pyrocumulus development. But again, the update on that, it's within containment lines, and they actually have some containment lines around here that they're actually hoping, eh, yeah, you could say hoping, they're actually planning, that's probably the better word, for that fire to continue to burn until it reaches those containment lines, and then they can basically just try to focus on mop up and patrol and really wrap up that northwestern section of the fire. So overall, Dixie Fire looking great right now. But again, thunder thunderstorm possibility coming through in the next couple of days, so we will have to keep an eye on it because you never really know when a thunderstorm comes through, it brings some erratic gusty winds, and it could lead to some flare-ups on some of those remaining smoldering areas. Now when it comes to the Tamarack Fire, this one, we're looking even better than the Dixie fire right now, and we have been for a number of days, almost no hot spots remaining around this fire. The key priority areas, that northern section and the northeastern finger here, where it was near the largest number of structures and also where we saw some of the most extreme fire growth a week ago, those, we're seeing full containment on those sections. Let's see if I still have the map. Full containment throughout the entire northern and northeastern section of this fire. Not as many structures on the southern edge, and the structures that are there, I don't think I have to be too worried because we still have a thousand personnel on this fire, and that whole southern edge has just been burning very slowly throughout the entire lifetime of this fire. So Tamarack Fire looking great as well, but just like the Dix Dixie, we do have that thunderstorm potential, and actually more of a thunderstorm potential for the Tamarack, about 30 to 50%, so we'll have to keep our eye on that because you never really know what's going to happen with erratic gusty winds that you can get with thunderstorms and the possibility of some new lightning fire starts. So certainly going to keep my eye on that, but looking great and under control right now. So now let's just look at some of the other big fires throughout the season, check in, see how they're doing. We'll zoom in on the river fire here, and you can see that that one did grow to almost 10,000 acres, but 100% containment. So that one, no longer a concern there. If we go up farther into Northern California, that's where we had really the first 
This is where wildfire season really started to kick off, was when we had the lava fire, the salt fire, and the tenant fire. You can see salt fire did get over 10,000 acres, but 100% containment as of right now. Lava fire did grow to 26,000 acres, but 78% containment. And if we zoom in there, you can see very few, if no hot spots remaining on that way, on that one. Really haven't seen any growth with that any, any time recently. And then finally, we can look at the tenant fire. It should be somewhere around right there. Interesting, it's not popping up. Let's see if it pops up if I turn off the weather watch. Oh, interesting. Tenant fire disappeared. That is still up there. Again, that one is up to 100% containment. I believe that did get around 100,000 acres. Again, don't maybe trust my numbers on that one, but we're looking good on the tenant fire as well. That one hasn't increased in over a week now. Now, when it comes to the bootleg, First thing you notice is that there is a fire weather watch over this area right now. Again, right there you can see scattered thunderstorms expected Thursday afternoon and evening and possibly Friday afternoon and evening. Hot weather will continue today through Friday, drying out most areas that received rainfall in the past couple of days. Southerly flow will continue to bring increasing atmospheric, I'm guessing that next word would be instability. Ah, I didn't want to click on that. So, you can read that whole thing on your own but when it comes to the bootleg fire again I stopped covering this about a week ago because it, we were only getting maybe a couple hundred acres of increased growth per day it was it basically looked like it was wrapped up and I'm sticking by that decision we haven't seen very much growth on the bootleg fire at all maybe a little more in this northern section where you still see some of those hot spots and that very northern finger right there where we see some of those hot spots but Overall, bootleg fire, it is up to 413,000 acres, but we're up to 53% containment. And you can just see, based on the hotspots, much, much better conditions up there. But again, that fire weather watch is in place, and any time a fire weather watch is in place, you do have to watch closely because that can re-flare up some of these areas. And again, that's really the only big question mark we have when it comes to our fires moving forward is those thunderstorms coming through possibility to flare some things up but again i would say when it comes to all of our western wildfires we're looking pretty good right now i i usually don't try to show this much confidence or optimism in a update and forecast but comparatively to a week ago all of our fires are looking great and we've had a lot of increased containment and much reduced fire spread fire activity, fire behavior, hot spots, spot fires, whatever you want to call it, much better conditions for Dixie Fire, Tamarack Fire, Bootleg Fire, all of our fires. And again, I actually was going to take the day off today, but I, I saw a couple sources putting out information that basically made it look like it was chaos in the West and there was, it was, everything was out of control and there was just basically creating fear and it... It's, that's just not what's actually going on right now. All of our fires in the West are looking good as of right now, and I don't expect there to be any changes in the future, but again, with those th with that thunderstorm possibility, we do have to keep our eye on them. I certainly will, but as of right now, basic summary, we're looking good. So with that being said, there is still a large number of evacuation orders in place, especially for the Dixie Fire, so... Always stay updated with your local resources. Don't just take my word for it. Again, I'm still a graduate student researching wildfire, so always go to the professionals if you're actually in these locations and if you are possibly still under an evacuation warning. So I hope this video is helpful, and uh, I will be back tomorrow to give another update and forecast, although I'm crossing my fingers, certainly hoping for nothing but good news as we look ahead. Again, I'll, be, I'll still be here throughout the entire rest of the wildfire season, updating you guys on every major wildfire that happens. And to all the firefighters out there, thank you for all the amazing work you do. And to anybody who has been affected by these wildfires, my thoughts and prayers go out to you. Hope this video was helpful, and thanks for watching.